spirit of the team that you kept going until the very end. How important is that for this team? I think it was a tough game. They were very aggressive against us and, you know, all of us were caring about our legs and they were really aggressive and I think the referee doesn't protect us too much, but I'm not here to complain about it. But I think in the end we show our quality and we won the last, in the last minute, so I think we deserve it. Thank you. Gentlemen there, please. George Miller, FIFA Films. Mo, how much did this feel like a home match for you? The support you got tonight was amazing. Can you just give me a sense of how special it was to, to feel that support here? I think all the stadium today was Egyptian. <laughs> I, can, I can hear that today. And, you know, when you feel support, uh, Egyptian support everywhere, I feel happy about that. And, you know, I always feel love when they call my name or I feel support from them. So I'm, I'm happy to, to hear that from them. There you go, Mo Salah's. Yes, he's not yeah, happy. He's not sat out many classicals in the last mm, ten years. No, no, I don't. No, no. Maybe the changing face of Barca. Yes, changing face yeah, of both. Frankie De Jong is playing now fairness. on that position. Yeah, Rakitic is playing. I think they missed Rakitic in midfield because he's the one who penetrates. He can score goals from midfield. They don't have enough goals. I'm sure Vidal actually went home, having discovered that he wasn't starting tonight. He left the stadium before the game even you can't started. Do that. Well, you can. No, it is. Yeah. See, that's surprising. Normally, it's the Dutch who do that. They walk out with a happy. No, <laughs> no, we have an argument. <laughs> First, we fight. Yeah. And then we just, you know, just. And then play. the argument follows, and then everybody goes home. Here you go. <laughs> Here's the winner in stoppage time. We just shaded. We talked about Liverpool not panicking there tonight. But part of the reason they're not panicking as well is they know they've got 30 minutes of extra time. I think they're probably thinking, if we, if we don't get it, there's no need to panic. We don't want 30 minutes, but if we don't get it, we'll beat them in extra time. Mm. I think that would have been the mindset anyway. Uh, one of those starting tonight, and he'll be pleased to have got the game under his belt, Adam Lallana. You left it very late indeed, but you're through to the final. Just talk us about it. Yeah, that's no coincidence. Um, in my late goals we've got this season, it's pure mentality and character. Um, difficult game tonight, different opposition, uh, causes issues at times, but um, you know the lads dug deep and with the changes we had impact. And um, you know Bobby was tremendous when he came on and nicked the goal for us. Yeah. And of course you played for Mengo in the final. What, what do you know about them? A different challenge altogether, I guess. Yeah, we wa we watched them the other night. I'm sure. Bobby and, and Alison um, can give us some information, uh, but you know we'll recover now. Um, it's nice that we got the goal before extra time, obviously with a quick turnaround. Brilliant. Thanks, Adam. Cheers, mate. All the best. Hey, Adam Lallana with uh, BN Sports. Aaron Summers, two one. Then Liverpool win it, and they'll be in the final, which we'll have live here on HD eleven on Saturday. The Leicester City Manchester City game will take place at the same time in the Premier League, but we'll be watching Liverpool here and. Uh, Everybody hoping now that, um, well, the English language speakers amongst us, that Liverpool go on to add that to their long CV of trophies won down the years. The one that's always eluded them. But it seems they've got their business head on and want to win it now. Yeah, they came here to win it, uh, for sure. Especially after all the discussions been the last few weeks. But uh, it's a tough game against Flamengo. It won't be easy. It's an attractive game as well, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. It's going to be a lot of fans there. Uh, if you see, you can see the European style they want to play. Mm. With Jesus as, as their coach, you know, he was always with Benfica. Um, but the second half, you could see a little bit more flair, more passion, quicker play. And uh, so it's going to be interesting to see. It's a great story for Mexico, isn't it, as well? This, yes. It's yes. an amazing story. We weren't expected to win, but trailing in the Copa Libertadores final. Yeah. And all of a sudden, from nowhere, produce an amazing finish in that. Last two minutes or yeah. something? Yeah. Extraordinary. So it was an amazing story for me. More reaction from the Khalifa International Stadium here in Doha tonight. Andy Robertson's waiting to talk to us. Andy, Adam was saying it was no coincidence that you scored another late goal. Talk us through it. A difficult game, would you say? Yeah, difficult. Um, you know, we knew they were um, a good team. They're, they're here for a reason. But we also knew they would tire. And, you know, the last 15, 20 minutes, the gap started to appear. And I think there's only going to be one team that, you, um, you know, won it. But luckily we got it done before extra time. Um, you know, that was important. Um, and Bobby comes off the bench and scores a great goal. So, I'm um, just delighted to be in the final now. Yeah, a different back four, shall we say, going into tonight. It's Ty Virgil van like how is he? Will he be okay for the final? Yeah, he should be. Um, you know, I think Virgil's just tucked up in bed, so um, hopefully he's had a good night's rest. But come Saturday, I'm sure he'll be fine. But I thought John Henson done different class there. First game he's ever played there, probably his professional career, and 
he stepped in and um, you know we, we tried to help him as much as we can and hopefully he, he says we've done that but um, I thought he was different class. And for the men go a different challenge for you on Saturday what do you know about them? Yeah we watched them we watched them in their semi-final last night um, you know first half they, they struggled against a good team but second half they were they were very dominant and um, you know amazing they played a great second half so we know they've got fantastic players we know it's going to be a tough game and we probably need to play better than tonight but we've got a couple of days to prepare for that and hopefully we can do it. Best of luck. Thanks Andy. Thank you very Cheers, much. Five that, that looked like they were going to end up in the back of the net and he comes and, and saves the day again. Key moments weren't they um, where perhaps we could have found ourselves behind at certain times this evening but for Alisson in, in superb form. I think we thought they may utilise the fact that we were a little bit light defensively and we know our full backs like to get forward and they certainly used that right hand channel perhaps more than the left hand side with Pabon who looked a threat for mm. them um, and having watched them certainly in the previous game one thing I saw was they want to shoot from distance and I saw that a lot tonight with, with, with shots from distance um, but it takes something really spectacular to beat our goalkeeper we've got one of the best in the world if not the best in the world and I think that show tonight where perhaps a heavy on, on an opposition doesn't it when they have the amount of chances that they do and Liverpool continually defend them well and, and it, it almost it's almost like they expect what's going to happen in the end we continue to miss all these chances Liverpool will get one at the end and, and score in the dying seconds it's happened so many times yeah I mean apart from the shots on target they didn't really carve us up did they you know the goal was the goal was disappointing for me, the one we conceded, because we've, I've seen it so many times where we come out blind, we don't come out with a man, you know. I've always been taught, you know, you come out with somebody, don't you, from a corner when it gets cleared, you'd always know where you are. We kind of get attracted to the ball, it happened against Palace with Zaha, right, remember right at the yeah, end when he yeah. got the opportunity, we clear the danger and then we come out a bit blind, we don't watch what's around us and obviously Zaha got in today and, you know, they scored the goal from that, you know, the ball was cleared, we all come out, got put back in it was an overhead kick and then sort of he was left on his own wanting to it was twice we could have played it I think it was Cater originally doesn't mm. clear and then Ox puts it back into an area where they keep it alive mm. um, the biggest concern for, I think we're looking at the linesman thinking put your flag up with the VAR but he takes a touch for Nes Mori mm. there's no one really putting him under enough pressure so he reacted the quickest inside the penalty area and it came straight after we'd got the opening goal wasn't it so mm. he responded qu quickly to that but I think what you were you alluding to there, scoring sort of late goals and goals in the second half, you know, the high tempo that we play, we kind of drive teams into the ground, you know, mm. the high press. We make teams really work for anything that they've got to create against us. It's even getting out from the back sometimes. Because the press is really good. We turn it over, we're straight back at them, we play with a high tempo. So that weighs you down as, as players, you know, the fatigue sets in last 10 or 15 minutes. It'd be interesting to see how many of the 33 we've actually scored in the last 15 minutes of a game. Yeah. You know, that crucial part of a game. I bet you that's quite a high number of that 33 mm. we have. Um, over the course of the season. They put a lot into the game as well, didn't they? I think before the game, people were saying for Monterey, this was the biggest game was, of, yeah. of, of their sort of the, the history, season, which is, yeah. um, you know, showed the importance for them. Now, for us, we want to win the trophy, but the biggest thing for us is, is to win the Premier League this season. Mm -hmm. and, and I think you could really see how much effort they put. First half, more so. I thought they tied a little bit second half, um, but you could see certainly they were desperate to win it and they put in a, a good show. Mm -hmm. Another goal for um, and it was another an, another decent performance from him and more minutes under his belt because we want to see him mm. you know at full fitness and, and playing all the time. I think he showed the difference he is compared to perhaps some of the other midfield players in there. He will run in behind. You know, he mentioned maybe Ox is more of an attacking midfielder, but I'm thinking he'll have the shots from that sort of distance. Whereas Cater will make that run in behind, uh, gets himself the goal, which is a, a great run. Nearly gets a second in the first half when he tries to go around the goalkeeper. But I think that's a part of his game which gives us something different. Certainly in games where you're trying to break down a, a, an organised defence and you've got the midfield runner rather than it just being the front three yeah. trying, trying to break them down. You like said, there's something different. You know, if you knock a ball into a a centre forward but then run on behind him you're causing all kinds of problems either for the second ball or just to take runners away mm. to create space for the centre forward who's got this ball at his feet and we see it with so many they're so agile the front three aren't they you know if anyone runs in behind and all of a sudden they step off to go with the run that just opens that gap up mm. for, the, for them to turn and shoot or to create something I've got a bit I, I tell you what though we've seen some fantastic assists over the last couple of weeks we were talking about it mm. we said about Marnay's ball in the first game uh, the first goal for Everton where he bends it round yeah, into Rigi's path what a ball that was Henderson's Bournemouth yeah Oxley Chamberlain Salah's Bournemouth the little back heel yeah but that tonight Salah's ball yeah. for the first goal mm. unbelievable the way yeah. he threads it through because he hardly has any room to thread it through and he puts the pace as well you've got to time yeah. that right mm. the, the, the pass appreciation was fantastic um, but to see the pass I know we'd run on but he was a little bit blind to the run 
but he finds him perfectly and then um, Kate has the simplest job to finish it off. Well, the crowd were desperate to see Mo Salah, so no surprise, I don't suppose, that he was voted their man of the match and the...